Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, episode slash day three of the continued readings of Training with Travis and continuing to invite you to jump deeper into your life by reading some of the great teachings from the 1800s from Maharaji and then explain them in the modern day language so that you can jump right in. Day three is all about the self stands behind the mind. Let's dive in. Questioner, as a child, fairly often I experienced states of complete happiness, verging on ecstasy. I, later they ceased. But since I came to India, they reappeared, particularly after I met you. Yet these states, however wonderful, are not lasting. They come and go, and there is no knowing when they will come back. Maharaji, how can anything be steady in a mind which in and of itself is not steady? How can I make my mind steady? You can, I, how can an unsteady mind make itself steady? Of course it cannot. It is the nature of the mind to roam about. All you can do is shift the focus of consciousness beyond the mind. How's that done? Refuse all thoughts except one, the thought, I am. The mind will rebel in the beginning, but with patience and perseverance, it will yield and keep quiet. Once you are quiet, things will begin to happen spontaneously and quite naturally without the interference on your part. Commonly called mogs, by the way. Can I avoid this protracted battle within myself? Yes, you can. Just live your life as it comes, but alertly and watchfully allowing everything to happen as it happens, doing the natural things in a natural way, suffering, rejoicing, as life brings. That is also a way. Well, then how, how, then how can I well marry, have children, run a business, be happy? Questions all of us ask today. Sure, you may or may not be happy. Take it in your stride. Yet I want happiness. True happiness cannot be found in things that change and pass away. Pleasure and pain alternate inexorably. Happiness comes from the self and can be found in the self only for your real self and all else will come with it. If my real self is peace and love, why is it so restless? Is it not your real being that is restless, but the reflection of the mind appears restless because the mind is restless. It is just like the reflection of the moon in the water stirred by the wind. The wind of desire stirs the mind and the me, which is but a reflection of the self in the mind and appears changeful. But these ideas of movement, restlessness, of pleasure and pain are all in the mind. The mind stands behind, the self stands behind the mind aware, but unconcerned. How does one reach it? You are the self here and now. Leave the mind alone, stand aware and unconcerned, and you will realize that to stand alert but detached, watching events come and go, is an aspect of your real nature. What are the other aspects? The aspects of, uh, are infinite in number. Realize one and you will realize all. Tell me something that would help. You know best what you need. I am restless, how do I gain peace? We get that question a lot. For, for what do you need peace? To be happy. Are you not happy now? No, I'm not. What makes you unhappy? I have what I don't want and I want, I want what I don't have. <laughs> Why don't you invert it? Want what you have and care not for what you don't have. I want what is pleasant and I don't want what is painful. How do you know what is pleasant and what is not? From past experience, of course, guided by memory, you have been pursuing the pleasant and shunning the unpleasant. Have you succeeded? No, I have not. The pleasant does not last, but the pain sets in again. Which, excuse me, which pain? The desire for pleasure, the fear of pain, both are states of distress. Is there any state of unalloyed pleasure? Every pleasure, physical or mental, needs an instrument. Both the physical and mental instruments are material. They get tired, worn out. They, ple they, they pleasure in them. The pleasure they yield is necessarily limited in intensity and duration. Pain is in the background of all your pleasures. You want them because you suffer. On the other hand, you create the search for pleasure, which is the cause of pain. It's a vicious cycle. I can see the mechanism of my confusion, but I do not see the way out of it. The very examination of the mechanism shows the way. After all, your confusion is only in the mind, which, is ne which never rebelled so far against confusion and never came to grips with. It rebelled only against pain. So all I can do is remain confused, be alert, question, observe, investigate, learn all you can about confusion, how it operates, what it does to you and others. By being clear about confusion, you become clear of confusion. 
When I look into myself, I find the strongest desire is to create a, a, a monument, to build something which will outlast me. Even when I think of a home, a wife, a child, it is because it is lasting, solid testimony to myself. Right, building yourself a monument. How do you, how do you propose to do it? It matters little of what I build as long as it is permanent. Surely you can see for yourself that nothing is permanent. All wears, down, wears out, breaks down, and dissolves. The very ground on which you build gives way. What can you build that will outlast all? Intellectually, verbally, I am aware all is transient. Yet somehow my heart wants permanency. I want to create something that lasts. Then you must build it of something lasting. What do you have that is lasting? Neither your body nor your mind will last. You must look elsewhere. I long for permanency, but, where, but I find it nowhere. Are you yourself not permanent? I was born, I shall die. Can you truly say you were not before you were born? And can you, and can you possibly say when dead, now I am no more? You cannot say from your own experience that you are not. You can only say, I am. Others, too, cannot tell you you are not. Therefore, is, is, no, is, no I am in, is there no I am in sleep? Before you make such sweeping statements, examine carefully your waking state. You will soon discover that it is in the full gaps of when the mind goes blank. Notice how little you remember, even when fully awake. You cannot say that you were conscious during sleep. You just don't remember. A gap in the memory is not necessarily a gap in consciousness. Can I make myself remember my state of deep sleep? Of course. By eliminating the intervals of inadvertence during your waking hours, you will gradually el eliminate the long inter uh, interval of absent-mindedness, which you call sleep. You will be aware uh, that you are asleep. Yet the problem of permanency of con continuity of being is not solved. Permanency is a mere idea born of the action of time. Time again depends on a memory. The per by permanency, you mean unfailing memory through the endless, endless time. You want to eternalize the mind, which is not possible. Then what is eternal? That which does not change with time. You cannot eternalize a transient thing. Only a change, only changeless is eternal. Well, I'm familiar with the general sense of what you say, but I do not crave for more knowledge. All I want is peace. You can have for the asking all the peace you want, but I'm asking. You must ask with an undivided heart and live an integrated life. How? Detach yourself from all that makes your mind restless. Renounce all that disturbs its peace. If you want peace, deserve it. Surely everyone else deserves peace. Only those who do not, who, only those who not disturb it deserve it. In what way do I deserve, disturb peace? By being a slave to your desires and fears. Even if they are justified? Emotional reactions born of ignorance or inadvertence are never justified. Seek a clear mind and a clean heart. All you need is to keep quietly alert, inquiring into the real nature of yourself. That is the only way to peace. <coughs> Excuse me. So Maharaja here is really having fun with the questioner because the questioner is really throwing a temper tantrum, which of course none of us ever really do, myself included. I want peace now. Yeah, that sounds really peaceful. I want it now, and if I don't get it now, I'm going to be pissed off, or I'm going to go hide, or I'm going to go throw a temper tantrum. Sound familiar? No different than the conscious mind continuing to argue and it's seeking for uh, pleasures or pain, as Maharaji is referencing to, is also talking about the fears and outcomes of desires. We're so attached to those, sometimes in the past future sequences we talked about yesterday, that we get really locked into it. And then we create this mind-made world that doesn't really exist. And when it doesn't happen, then we're upset because the expectation was created by us. And when it doesn't realize, which we're the ones that created that expectation, then we throw a temper tantrum at the expectation that we didn't create. And you guys think you're sane. It's the definition of madness. When are we gonna jump into our real life and start unwinding all of the ideas, the thoughts, the belief structures, some of them were put there by you, many others that were not, and unwind them so that you come down to the state where you're down here. The timelessness that Maharaji is referencing, although challenging at times, I get it, is really talking about your spirit or what we call the architect. It's the architect within, timeless, shapeless, continue to be eternal, but most importantly, it is the infinite becoming finite, commonly called your body and your life, and experiencing its ability to express from the infinite or the I in finite into the finite world so they can be moved into 3D space. If you truly want peace, you must come from a space of peace. 
Now, for most of us, calming the mind is the most difficult thing. If you want more help on how to do that, you can continue to watch these readings, or most importantly, why don't you jump into your own life, do the jump training, and start to learn the step-by-step -step methodology that all the architects go through to start their journey, and you can start yours. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Tomorrow, we talk about the next day. Jump into your life. Architect out. Bye-bye.